Well, this week, guess what? It's about time. We finally drew our tags. Yeah. And we're able to go down with Brian Newell. Yeah, top-notch outfitters in New Mexico for Mule Deer. Now, we've been, I mean, we've been on the air for 21 years now, and we've had crews go down and hunting with Brian for at least the last 15. Yes. Usually elk or mule deer or something. We just could never Orcs. sync up our, yeah. Yep. We could just never sync up our schedules. Well. Till last fall. Yeah. So we grew mule deer tags. Right, and what was really cool is, you know, there's a reason why Brian Newell's outfit's called Top Notch, because I'm gonna tell you something. He doesn't run a giant operation. He's really concentrated on making a, having a great hunt for all of his clients, and wow, huh? Yeah, so this week, Six point we're eight. heading to New Mexico, Top Notch Outfitters. I'm Vicki. I'm Ralph. And this is The Choice. Well, we're heading to New Mexico. Well, we are in New Mexico. Heading to Brian Newell, Top Notch Outfitters here. You know, our crew has been hunting, we've been hunting here for a long time. Most of the guys, the girls have shot their elk with, with Brian. A couple have shot Gems Buck or Orcs. So Vicky and I, we got mule deer tags and we can't wait. We're gonna be there in a few hours. And um, I think the muley should be starting to rut down here too just like they were back up in Colorado. We'll see. I've been outfitting in this area for 22 years. Um, I started down here in New Mexico. I moved from Colorado down here and started down here in 98. I started, primarily did a lot of draw hunts and elk hunting, and we've moved more to private land just because the draw has gotten tougher but we still do public land draw hunts, but the, the private land is primarily what we do, maybe 80% of what we do. And so uh, we do public land draw hunts for elk, oryx, mule deer, antelope. We do private land elk, mule deer, antelope, and some turkeys also. We've had Archer's Choice, Ralph and Vicky's crew, coming here since, I don't know, forever, a long time, I think, uh, 2011 maybe. It's always been the posse members or the crew or just somebody else. This year, we finally got Ralph and Vicky out. Nice to have them and, and see them and get to spend some time with them. We got to camp, got everything, got in there, got things set up, and I mean, we were ready to rock. We took our new Browning 6.8 Western out on this trip, and we already know that this gun is just rocks. Uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, this gun is my go-to rifle. Caliper the whole nine yards. It's my go-to rifle. Yours? Enough said. Look at that 6.8 Western. Brand new caliper, we've been using it this fall. Had some great success so far with it. So I'm excited to get out. We're gonna be hunting some rolling hills for mule deer out here. Brian said we can expect anything, but hopefully because it's December 1st right now, we're hoping that the bucks have not already started running, which sounds kind of strange, because we want them to be out there in the hills still. This ranch that we're hunting on is on a special program. We have a flexible hunt schedule, so we can rifle hunt November 1st through December 15th. So these, these bucks now, right now, are just starting to rut. The first morning with, with Vicky hunting, we went out, we drove around glass in different areas. We found this nice buck right off. He was kind of following a doe around, a couple does actually, I think. Okay, I see him. He's coming. some trees and we had to move around a little bit and he finally he finally cleared a tree and came out where where Vicky could get a shot Did I hit low? Did I hit low? She 
took a shot and the buck flinched and kind of hunched up and I was sure that she hit him at the time. Back behind the buck, if you watch real close, you can see the branch move. As the buck's standing there and turning, there was no impact on the buck. There was no holes, no, no hair flying, nothing. Of course, we looked when we were there, couldn't find any blood. Well, it should be easy, but uh, you would you know, think it never is. But we got up on that buck and them does, and he was just so close, and I missed. You know, maybe in my own head, I already had him mounted on the mantle. You know, yeah. it shouldn't. It should have been easy. It never is easy. Yeah. Never. You know, you know, happens to the best of us. Well, I think we should let Ralph up next. I think I'll film him. He can. The next buck we get up on, he can go ahead and take a chance and see if he can shoot, shoot it. Okay. <laughs> How's that sound? All right. I've had a shot. It's what I can do. Now it's Ralph's turn. Ralphie, it's your turn. <laughs> After a close encounter with an excellent mule deer buck and an unfortunate miss, Vicki passes the new Browning 6.8 Western off to Ralph to give him the next shot at a buck. Vicki said that was it for her. She's gonna, she's gonna get behind the camera and let Ralph hunt. So we did the same thing with Ralph. We, we drove around, looked, glassed different spots. And that evening we were glassing down from a ridge and we saw a buck down in the bottom. We got a buck down here about 400 yards from us and he's looking hard. We worked our way down there and got into some rocks and of course his buck, he either heard or smelled or something, he knew something was up. Just trying to move and him moving and watching and knowing something was going on. We busted that buck, never could get footage of him. He ended up taking off. He was a really nice buck. We just had a beautiful buck up right. Beautiful frame. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful deer. And we came around, we come up that ridge, came through that valley, came up here. He heard us or something. But did you feel the wind too? I felt like that wind was coming down. But and Vicky never got us up, it's never saw him. Oh. So the next morning we got up and it was cold and nasty and looked outside and it's it's snowing. The, the visibility was, was terrible. The conditions were terrible, it was windy. So anyway, we, we didn't last very long. We, we knew the animals weren't moving. Well, we are gonna drive around and with the snow and wind and weather and everything, <laughs> We're gonna see if we can find something. I don't know if they're gonna be bedded up or what they're gonna be doing, but we're just gonna try and cover some ground, do a little glassing. The reality of it is knowing the game, knowing where they're at. Right. I guess that's why you call it top notch. As the day continues, the weather finally clears up, giving the crew some much needed visibility and better hunting conditions. So that evening after the snow, we still weren't having much luck finding anything. And then right at dark, there's a couple deer there. Two nice bucks, actually, a smaller buck. And we got on this one buck and he kept walking and he was moving through and in behind trees. And so we'd have to pick up and move over 10 feet. He'd walk out from behind a tree. It was just constant moving and it was right at dark, running out of light. He's moving around the bush there. Just tuck his head out right there. Luckily, just he stopped in one little clearing and Ralph was able to make a good shot. Oh, yeah. He didn't go very far and we got him right after that. Oh yes. Look at the shot. Nice shot. <laughs> You're talking about a mature buck right here. Look at his neck. He's yeah. He's starting to get. Look at, you can feel a little bubble going, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, unbelievable. Nice. <sighs> Thank you, brother. Come over here, man. Yeah. You guys saw, we had snow, we had high winds, we had miserable weather, 
And Brian was like, come on, we can't catch a break. Lo and behold, we came up, we spotted these, this buck, and everything worked out. We were losing light fast, but we had to take the opportunity, and we made it happen. We're shooting our new Brownie 6.8 Western, and it, huh? It put him Looks down. Looks like pretty it did a good job. <laughs> He didn't go very far. No, he didn't. Oh, man. Dang. We're here with Brian Newell, top-notch outfitters in New Mexico. Our crew have been hunting with him for years. It's our first final chance to get here, and we will make this a habit. All right, I got to be honest with y'all, and that is, for years, I would never really be concerned about any history, about scenics, about, you, you know what I mean, when, right. when we would travel. I was really intrigued that we were at Smoky Bear. We were at, no, we were in El Capitan, which is the which home is, of Smoky Bear. Yeah, that's Bear. what I'm talking about. I didn't even know any of that, and Smoky Bear is, I mean, he, he's the dude. He's a national treasure. Created in 1944, the Smoky Bear Wildfire Prevention Campaign has been the longest running public service advertising campaign in U.S. history, educating generations of Americans about their role in preventing wildfires. After the 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor, experienced firefighters and other able-bodied men were deployed in the war, forcing communities to deal with wildfires on their own. Protection of forests became a matter of national importance, and a new idea was born. On August 9, 1944, the creation of Smokey Bear was authorized by the Forest Service. The living symbol of Smokey Bear was a five-pound, three-month-old black bear cub who was found in the spring of 1950 after the Capitan Gap fire. Smokey had climbed a tree to escape the blaze, and news about the little bear spread swiftly. Soon, his story was broadcast nationwide. Though he has already accomplished so much, Smokey's work is far from over. Wildfire prevention remains crucial, and he still needs your help. His catchphrase reflects your responsibility. Only you can prevent wildfires. Remember that this phrase is so much more than just a slogan. It's an important way to care for the world around you. And I gotta tell you something, we're having a lot of fun because we're, we're back to doing more, just you and I. You and I filming each other, yep. creating chaos now, wherever we go. As any couple can understand this. There's times that, well, we each get on each other's nerves. No. And I think if you cut some of the coffee out, I think things would be better. It was really a nice morning. It was, it was, it was cold, but it was clear, no wind. The conditions were, were good. Pretty quick, we got on some deer. We were watching some does, and sure enough, here comes this bigger buck coming in. We just got up on him and got set up, and he was quartering away real hard. Vicky had to wait for him to turn. She got just enough of a quartering shot and took the shot. He was done there, but when he took off running, she had another opportunity to put another one in him. And she nailed him on that one, too. Yeah, baby. That's how you do it. <laughs> yeah. So he went down after that, and it was a nice buck. We are glad to have him. I was pretty excited about that second shot. I mean, about my whole hunt. Oh, yeah. But that was so cool. That was my instincts just kicking Kick in. And that 6.8, that first shot was great. But I was oh, yeah. like, you have the opportunity. <laughs> Boom, that expo. Awesome. I love it. We all love it. Beautiful. Look at him. I guess right there. Goodness. Yeah. Beautiful buck. What a hunt. What a yeah. freaking hunt. It was awesome. Yeah. It really was, buddy. It's been good. You know, it's just all these years and we finally did it. And now I'm going to tell you something. If you don't mind, we're going to make it a habit. Beautiful buck. And we saw some other really nice oh my ones gosh. there. I Every mean, this time. is like we were talking. This is a nice buck in this area. Well, we can't thank you again enough. I mean, but Ralph, I know you can't see this on the camera, but look at his dew claw. Holy cow. Never wow. seen that. There you go, sir. That was almost too easy for you.
we've had a good time this week. We've had uh, good success. Saw some deer, got a couple killed, and it was a good week. As the owner of Top Notch Outfitters, Brian has been outfitting full time for over 20 years. But perhaps one of Brian's greatest joys during his hunting career as a guide was guiding his son, Christian, when he drew his first ever youth tag at 14 years old. I hit him about 150 yards and he ran and he just took off at a dead sprint. turned around, he did a little wobble type thing and he was just standing there behind a tree and I shot him again and it spined him and he dropped. Christian made a great shot, and we went up and uh, recovered a great bull. Look at him. Holy crap. I didn't think he was that big. <laughs> what do you think of that, huh? Oh, man. He's a beautiful bull. So excited. Awesome. And it, it, it's just been awesome with my dad and everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's a good hunt, huh? I was so happy. I, all the emotions kicked in. I, I just... I can't explain everything that happened. It was, it was awesome. Well, Christian has been applying for, for a youth hunt for quite a few years, and uh, this is the first actual youth tag he's drawn. Man, it's been well worth the wait, being able to, to go out and hunt with my son, chase, chase these big bulls while they're rutting and everything. This is a great experience. You know, it's... Uh, as an outfitter, you get to you get to chase these bulls around, but it's it's always different when when you're out here with your son and having a good time. Good job. Thanks. I love you. Love you too. It's a special time for a dad and a and a son to to be able to hunt together and spend that time together. He's 14 now to draw on this elk tag. It's it's just a special time for us uh, to be to be in the woods and to be able to hunt elk together. Well, congratulations. Thank you, you too, that was Thanks. awesome. That was, it was a kind it was a cold hunt. Yeah, it, was, it got chilly, but it, it wasn't, I mean, I mean, you know, here's the bottom line. Brian had all the deer patterned, yeah. you know, where everywhere we were going, we, we were We knew where we deer. needed to go. Absolutely. You know, and the Newells, I mean, what a family. Absolutely. They, they welcome all of their clients into the family, I mean, it, this is an operation that truly, truly is one that you, you, if you go, you're going to continue. Yeah, and I mean, like we said, I mean, he had the deer pattern. We had our new Browning 6.8 Western out there with us. And I mean, the knockdown power that we have found with that rifle. My new caliper. Is Done. insane. So again, Brian, all you guys over there in the Newell family, top notch outfitters in New Mexico. Thank you guys so much for having us out there. And we're glad you guys were watching this week's episode. Thanks for making your choice. The choice. We'll see you next week.